EA Sports. It's in the game. Everybody, welcome back to another golf review. This time it's PGA Tour 96 on the Genesis. And at first, let's just say I hated this game. I was playing as the pros, and this one utilizes one of those curved swing meters that, that goes with your golf swing. You'll see in just a moment. And it's always really hard on those to lock in at the bottom of the swing consistently to hit a, a good shot straight on and I just was choosing a pro to play as at first and I could not or if ever rarely get it to lock on center so I tried playing this on different formats and I say that because you, you definitely don't want to play golf games that take this kind of precision of pressing the button on a modern TV. You're just never gonna get any consistency due to, to the, even the tiniest bit of lag on these screens. So you gotta play these, you gotta emulate them, or you've got to play them on original hardware, or at least some of the modern stuff that also has the AV outputs that go to a CRT, so that you can actually have some consistency with the feel of it and you can really get that feeling that when you push the button, it's going to react instantly because it's, it's so important with, with golf games. Um, I picked this up for like $4 somewhere and you know, it's hard for me to resist a golf game when it's only $4. And this one looked a little different. I guess it's really um, quite advanced for the time. I mean, we were getting into the, I think the PlayStation 1 was out at the time. So you're talking 3D stuff was starting to come out and this was utilizing 3D um, in the background. So everything was, you know, overlaid over that. And you can see it kind of it kind of draws like the old games used to back in the uh, early 90s on PC. So it's in the background, quite an achievement. But having said that, the load times are slower drawing the screen. So the pace is really bogged down by it. But that didn't bother me after a while. What was really bothering me is that swing meter. And the pros just swing so fast that you can't, you can't be consistent. So once I learned that I could get into the settings and I created my own player, and you can't do it with the pros though, but you can create an amateur or a novice player where the swing meter has a wider sweet spot or you have the wider sweet spot as a novice and you're able to slow down the swing which makes the game a lot more fun for any newcomers. So that bit aside, then comes into play the view. You can't aim on the, the overhead view, which I think is a problem. You know, most, most golf games, when you're aiming on screen, you get to see an indicator on the, the top view. That doesn't happen in this game. So, you know, not, not the best not the best use of that. They should have they should have allowed you to see where you're aiming on the top view. And I read in the manual, which helps a bit, if you're if you're teeing off, it always aims you at the center of the fairway. Now, the center of the fairway, does that mean your club distance or the pro's club distance? Because your distance is different depending on if you're a amateur, novice, or a pro. So it does by default aim you at the center and also by default aims you at the pin, unless you're on a par three. If you're on a par three, it will by default aim you at the center of the green. The next thing is this putting green. It is horrible to figure out putts on this. The caddy or the assistant will tell you a lot of times it's just straight in, uh, but it's obviously not straight in. You can see the dots move a little bit, but it's not like the grid system that they had in the old games. It's just not intuitive. You can't see well enough. You can't tell which way it's going to go. And, and once again, if you go, it's, it's not very forgiving. If you go a little over the sweet spot, it's going to take off to the right a lot. It's going to take off to the left a lot. So that's why it's really good to, to make your own player and choose probably novice if you want to really be able to 
play the game and feel like you have control over it or um, amateur is fine, but it's a little bit faster. But you'll, you'll then feel like you at least have some control over hitting the sweet spot and control over your putt. Now, another part that bothers me is sometimes I'll hit the ball and it'll take off in a direction that I don't quite understand occasionally. And that's probably due to the wind. Like right now you can see it's like five miles an hour and you know, it's kind of blowing center and then a little bit to the left, but it's really hard to understand which way the wind is blowing sometimes because that, that indicator is so tiny. I'm sure if you put it on the breezy mode instead of calm wind, you'd clearly see it blowing left or right real strong. But I'm not sure how you understand if it's blowing at you right now or to the left a little or if it's blowing away from you a little bit to the left it's 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 just very ambiguous so i i sometimes don't know if i'm gonna be affected by the wind carrying the ball further or you know making it short because the wind's blowing at me i don't know maybe i just can't read this maybe someone else out there can read it better but uh the wind's trouble for me in this it's just not as clear as it is in other games so I'm just going to wrap up this hole. Uh, I didn't play horribly this round that I'm showing, but this is using the Pro, and it just falls apart because once once you start missing the sweet spot, you start second-guessing when to push, and then you start pushing way too early and way too late, and it's just it becomes a nightmare, and the frustration just ruins the experience. So I'm going to build my own player here, and I'm going to create a novice player, not a novice player, an amateur player. The novice one gives you a slower swing meter, but like I said, the, the amateur and novice gives you a bigger sweet spot, which, which helps so much with playing the game. Not that you're not going to have issues sometimes, and you're definitely going to struggle with the putting, but it really, the, the teeing off and the other shots are pretty good once you get used to it. It's just, putting is gonna take a while to get used to and reading it and taking into account the comments that they give you. It's funny, the commentary that you turn on is really just the caddy telling you just before the shot, like how it's gonna break. And I thought that would have been turning on the caddy. Turning on the caddy may just be the, it gives you automatic club selection, which helps you out. You can obviously change your clubs if you want. And that's just by pushing up and down on the D-pad and your aim left to right on the D-pad. So getting into some of the more advanced features, you can push your C button to bring up whether you want to chip, pitch, or hit normal. So that gives you a little extra finesse around the short game when you get closer to the greens. And then, depending on what club you have, if you push the A button, that will allow you to add some uh, hook or slice or top or backspin to the ball, which I've, I had a few shots that it really benefited by, by doing that. And the B button in the center is the one that you use for your shots. So I didn't quite like how that worked, but I guess it made sense because the C button brings your menu up on the right, the A button brings the little menu up for the ball on the left, and the center is where your player is, and that's where you're taking your shot. So looking back, I guess that's kind of intuitive now, but I'm so used to using the C button on Genesis for a primary button. But I guess, you know, they tried something and it worked. After a while, I kind of got used to that configuration. So this is one of those situations, as you can see on screen right now, where it gets frustrating with the putting, because I, I definitely hit it well over. 10 feet, but I didn't even make it to the the hole, and it said I was only 2 inches below. Now this next one says I'm, I'm 0 inches below the hole. I only got 20 inches, so I hit it about 4 feet worth, which should clear it, but it only goes a foot. Which, you know, th that's what I'm learning. You really gotta overhit these sometimes. And if you're not straight on the ball's going to go too far but it's always better to get it to the hole because it's never going to go in if you don't get it to the hole so wh what are the good points or the good things i like about this game well i don't know sometimes but i i keep wanting to play so i guess there's something about it that's done right and i, I think just the the, the view is 
unique. You know, you do have a feeling of height and elevation when playing this. So that's a nice aspect to have on on a 16-bit system that you didn't really see in every other game. Everything was kind of just flat looking. This you really do get the feeling of undulation and 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 the rise and you can see when you're you're striking the ball, you get a clear view of, you know, if you're hitting uphill or not. And I do really like the golfer animations on this. I wish you could use the pros as an amateur, but they're stuck on the pro level. I don't, I don't think there's a way to change it. I tried. So I'll show some of those animations uh, right now, and then I'll cut back into some of my gameplay, and you'll see that as time goes on, I am improving. So overall, I guess I'm going to give this, it's really tough. I want to give it a 5, maybe a 6. And I think I'll go with a six because I believe that if I spend more time with this, which I, I'm going to, I'm going to play probably at least another 10 rounds because I'm in a tournament mode right now and I'm into the second round and I'm in the lead, which goes to show that it is possible if at least you're playing on the novice mode, you can keep up with the pros. So let's say it's going to be a six because the more you play it, the more you'll get used to it. Again, a lot of disappointing things. It seemed to be very ambitious for the time, and it was obviously late in the cycle of the Genesis. I mean, this was a seven-year-old system or a six-year-old system when it came out, and let's just say they were trying to move in a new direction, and oftentimes when you do that with a series, a game series, it actually brings the gameplay backwards a bit for most players. So we'll just say that they tried their best to make some changes and it didn't quite work out, but it's a different experience, and I can appreciate that at least, and not knock them for trying to advance gameplay on a system that had been the same for so many years. So there you have it. That's PGA Tour 96 on the Genesis. A little bit of a long review for me. Usually things are more clear-cut than this one. I kind of hate it. I kind of like it. It's just it's fuzzy for me, and uh, maybe this will give you the impression on whether or not if you like old golf games on the 16-bit and 8-bit systems and the early computers, this may give you a better idea on whether or not you even want to try playing this or not. So you may want to stay away from it because of the things I said that you don't like, and you may want to try it because of the innovation that it was trying to create at the time. So... Again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. So long.